The NHS or National Health Service is a fantastic health system that caters to millions of people. But if you've not used it before, it may be a bit difficult to understand how it works. So as a new immigrant arriving from Nigeria to the UK, here are some things that might challenge you when you first use the service and how to overcome them or at least understand. Number one, waiting time. I get it. They said the NHS is one of the best health systems in the world. Top notch medical care with up to date healthcare technology. So why are you waiting hours on the phone to get through to your surgery? And when you finally get through, the next appointment to see a doctor is three or four weeks away. In another scenario, you attend the emergency department and you're told that the waiting time to see a doctor is four to six hours long. The same could happen if you try to use the out of hours service or attend your local walk-in center. There are many different reasons for this, such as a bigger demand for the service than the current supply of the health workers. Plus, it's become worse since the COVID-19 pandemic. Most hospitals and GP surgeries are dealing with backlogs of cases and follow-up. It is fair to say that the NHS is at one of the most challenging points of its history. But many services do recognize this problem and try to mediate. Some GP surgeries offer a walk-in service. In addition, you can book an appointment online in some cases or have a telephone and video consultation. The accident and emergency department becomes so busy with non-accident and non-emergency conditions, so the primary care stream was developed. The primary care stream or PCS is used when people who do not have a life-threatening condition will be directed from the emergency department to a nearby or local out-of-hours GP service. Don't forget you can learn more about how the NHS works. Watch my video on NHS basics for new immigrants to understand this better. So it's not a perfect service and the problem does not apply to immigrants alone. There is pressure on the NHS and the long waiting time or waiting hours is one indicator of this challenge. Number two, dealing with multiple problems at one appointment in your GP surgery. This is another challenging one. It's particularly painful when you go to see a doctor for the first time and you've been waiting several weeks for that appointment. During that time you've been waiting, several problems may have accumulated and you want to discuss them all. What you may not realize though is that your appointment is only 10 minutes or in some cases 15 minutes long. There you are having your consultation and around 7-8 minutes your doctor starts indicating they want to start rounding things up. This leaves you feeling all manner of frustration, disappointment, hurt, even anger that you've not received the care that you need. It can be tough to understand especially when you come from a system with no organized appointment times as you may have in some Nigerian clinics and hospitals. But the UK GP will address one or two problems in an appointment because we have appointment slots that are usually 10 minutes long. In some practices, they may be 15 minutes. You may get about 15 to 30 minutes at your first hospital outpatient appointment. And of course, this depends on the type of clinic too. Doctors at the clinic, whether in hospital or at the GP surgery, have a list of patients that they either need to see or call after dealing with you, as well as other tasks that simply will not get done if they do not stick to the appointment time. And many times we encounter issues while talking with you that may keep us longer than 10 minutes, but as much as possible, we try to keep to time. This is why your doctor may be typing at the computer while talking to you. They're not being rude or unkind, but just trying to save time. Although they should explain to you why they're doing so if it happens. How can you get on top of this? by letting the GP know at the start of the appointment that you have a number of things on your mind. In that case, they may ask you if it's possible to discuss the most pressing problem or problems at that appointment and arrange a second visit to look at the other issues or a subsequent telephone call. This is much better than trying to rush over things with you or failing to explain why you can't discuss all the problems at that meeting. Another option, if it is available at your surgery, is to ask the receptionist when you're booking the appointment for a double slot. This gives you a chance to talk at length at your appointment. The third issue that could be a challenge is the expectation to have any test performed on demand. I think you might feel this way if you come from a system where you can walk into a laboratory or a scan center to request a test. This often happens in Nigeria 
and as long as you can pay for it you'll get the test done in the nhs it's pretty different because your doctor has to request for the test on your behalf and so they need to ensure it is appropriate to order it for you this can often cause friction between you and your doctor and yes it speaks to the economics of care but it is part of the doctor's job to ensure they are ordering tests that are consistent with your symptoms while ensuring that you are given the best and safest care possible so of course you are concerned about a health problem that you feel deserves one test or the other and you may be right so it's also your doctor's job to explore your symptoms and your concerns before agreeing that the test is the right way to go other times though this may not be the case you may feel you have a problem that requires a test but after going through your symptoms and examining you your doctor might want to offer an alternative suggestion or option that does not include the test that you want now ideally they should discuss with you and explain why they feel the test is not appropriate for you at that stage and they should offer a review or follow-up of your condition within a short time to see if things are getting better or not and if you disagree with your doctor that's okay please don't forget you can request a second opinion from another doctor with a fresh pair of eyes to look at the problem number four this might be difficult to accept initially and is the fact that you do not have access to antibiotics which are commonly sold over the counter back in Nigeria. Back home, many people can walk into a chemist and request for antibiotics like Flagyl or Ampicillin without a prescription to self-medicate certain illnesses. Bad practice, but that's the culture. You tell me in the comments that you've never done that before, but it is impossible to get this medicine in the UK without a doctor's prescription. So let's take diarrhea as an example. Most often, diarrheal illnesses in the UK are not treated with medicines unless a stool test suggests otherwise. And it's because in most cases of vomiting and diarrhea, the cause is usually viral in nature. So the illness is often self-limiting. This means you will usually recover from the germs without any medication required. Most often, we recommend rehydration with fluids like water or rehydration salts for treatment. Still, some people feel they will not get better without a course of flagyl or ampicillin, which is not true. So please be aware that for some of these self-limiting conditions, for example, diarrhea and vomiting that lasts one or two days or a common cold, we don't offer antibiotics or antivirals unless these conditions have become complicated. So check out my video here on acute diarrhea to learn the recommended home-based treatments. Number five, paying for your prescription another challenge that crops up when you first start using the service is getting drugs and you might wonder why must you pay for your medication when you've already paid the health immigration tax simply put the nhs immigration surcharge gives you free nhs care for some services at the point of use but this does not include your drug prescription if you live in england technically most uk adults pay tax for our free nhs service all migrants to the UK pay a health surcharge when applying for their visa which gives them access to NHS care. Most people in England pay for items on their prescription unless they are medically exempt and this will apply to you as well. Each item on a standard NHS prescription will attract a fixed charge. Currently it's £9.35. So if your doctor issues you one prescription with three items on it you will pay 28 pounds and five pence regardless of the individual costs of the drugs please check out the site here to learn who can have access to free nhs prescriptions and i'll place the link in the description box as well they range from people under 16 years and over 65 to pregnant women people with disabilities, some health conditions and other groups. If you live in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, you will get free prescriptions through the NHS regardless of your age. There are also options like the NHS Low Income Scheme that allows you to pay less for your prescription if you are a pensioner, a student, earning a wage, receiving state benefits or living in a care home. You can apply online for this service to see if you're eligible. Another helpful tool for cutting down prescription costs is the NHS Prepayment Prescription Certificate PPC. This helps you save on prescription costs, especially if you take more than two or three medicines monthly over a long period of time so the cost of these medicines using a PPC comes out much cheaper than paying for them 
with a standard prescription. I'll also add the link for the low income scheme and the PPC so you can check them out and see if they are suitable for you. Are you getting value from this video? Then please like it and let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel at the same time. The next challenge involves access to specialist care or services. You may not be used to having to see one doctor before you can get referred to another one who is a specialist. In some cases, you can walk into a hospital and ask to see a gynecologist or an ear surgeon. This is possible in a private hospital where you pay the fees. But even in the UK, the specialist in the private hospital will still require that you have a referral from your GP. And this is because in the NHS, your GP is a central coordinator for your care. So treatment usually starts with a visit to your GP. Your doctor will need to decide whether this is a problem that can be managed by them, a generalist, or requires a specialist. Sometimes your GP will identify that the care you need is what you thought it was, and they can either treat you or refer you to the appropriate specialist. The next challenge is how you can't see the same doctor twice. Hmm. Yes, it is good to have a doctor who you begin with over a particular healthcare problem. They go on and follow you up until the problem is resolved. It may be that you establish a very good relationship with this doctor, you feel you get on well with them, but in addition, they're familiar with the information about the problem and your history, and you don't have to tell the story over and over and over again. It's only natural that you want to see them when you need to. Unfortunately, that is not always possible. It's not impossible, but if you requested it, it may be they're not available at the time that you wish to see them, or you need to wait some time before you can get on their next clinic list. Usually appointments are given based on the next available slot, regardless of which doctor is working that day. But please don't let that stop you from requesting a doctor of your choice. If they are available, you should be able to get an appointment to see them. Number eight, the struggle of getting past the receptionist. Have you experienced this? Please tell us in the comments. One of the complaints I hear from some patients is that the receptionist on the phone or at the front desk at the reception did not allow them to get an appointment to see me or one other doctor. So they think the receptionist is blocking their access to the doctor. However, many times, in the majority of cases, the receptionists are only executing a policy that has been set up by the practice management and the doctors. For example, they will offer the appointments available on a first come first served basis. And unfortunately, it's even more difficult these days because of the pressure on the service, which I spoke about earlier. Appointments go very quickly. So when you call, you may be told, oh, there are no more appointments. And you feel the receptionist is just trying to prevent you from getting across to a doctor or just make it difficult for you. But this is not the case. Often as frontline officers of the surgery, they do bear the brunt of blame and upset from patients, but they're not responsible for making these decisions. Take a look at some of these screenshots I got of Twitter, where some people were complaining about the receptionist preventing them from seeing their doctor when they wanted to. Several GPs responded to explain that the receptionists are not the people making the rules. So please take it easy on them. And another tip when you call or you're trying to make an appointment is consider asking for a phone appointment if you're told no more phone appointments are available. Let me know what you think of these challenges. Did you experience them or anyone similar? I would really love to hear from you in the comments. In this video, we talked about doctors making decisions, doing tests related to your symptoms. So next, I'd like you to check out this video here, where I talk about how doctors approach a problem like heavy menstrual bleeding. Before you do that, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the comments.